Okay, so welcome to this video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to fix a twin CD player, or a single CD player even, uh, that's got a sticking drawer. So these are general rack mount DGA professional CD players. And what happens is with age, the belts on the trays stretch, so they won't open and close. Now this one will open and close when there's a disc in. But if you take the disc out, and then try and open it, it won't open. What you can often get them to do is open when you tap on the top. Like so. And all that's happened is the belt is slightly stretched, bigger than it should be. So it's not getting quite the grip it needs to, to open the tray mechanism. Now this is quite easy to fix. Uh, and in a lot of cases, it's not going to cost you anything. You don't even have to replace the belt. All you have to do is shrink it. So you can shrink it using boiling water, which I do with a kettle, but you could boil water, whatever, on, on, in a saucepan. And basically it just shrinks the belt down slightly with the heat, and it'll last for a good while. I've done it and not had to do it again for many years. And all you need to do this is probably about half an hour to an hour to sauce it out, if that. Uh, you're going to need a screwdriver, which is generally going to be a crosshead um, type fitting to open the casing. So there's two screws on each side on most of these things. Two there, two there. You'll often find one on the top here. And then you'll also find one on the back here usually, near where the mains cable goes in. This is the same for various types. This is an Electrovision unit. And this here is a cam unit that I'm doing the demonstration on. The other thing you'll want is probably a slightly smaller uh, crosshead Phillips screwdriver. And you may also find a small flat screwdriver could come in handy. And that's pretty much all you're going to need. So I'll show you how to do this now. I'll just put my phone on the stand and we'll take this apart. Okay, so for the sake of this video, I've already taken the screws out of the unit and they're here. But uh, once you've took the fat four five or six screws out depends on your model all you have to do is take the top of the casing off so obviously make sure the unit's turned off when you're doing this so you don't catch anything with your fingers and you just have to slide it backwards like so and then if you just get your fingers around the side and sort of lift it out like that because you can see it's got this like um bit that curves under like a clamshell type thing so you just have to what, sort of open it and you can put that to one side and this is the guts of the player. Uh, just for the sake of showing you, I also took this other unit apart that's a different brand. And I'll just show you the internals are basically the same. It's uh, pretty identical. These things are more or less the same design throughout whatever one you've got. So anyway, down to the unit that we've got to fix. Uh, even if one of the side on your unit is sticking, I recommend you do them both. So what you're going to want to do is, once you've set the lid off, turn it on and just eject both sides. It actually worked that time, you see. Um, so, take the discs out if you've got any in and put them out of the way. And now turn the unit off with the trays left open, leave, leave the trays stuck out like they are. I'm going to move the displays over there. Push this back a touch. So, I'm going to show you what just on one deck. Um, obviously the process is the same for both because it's a complete mirror image. It's two units in one box. But I'll just show you on one side. Okay, so I've switched to the uh, sort of sideways angle now to show you it better because you're not all fitting frame at once. So, the first thing you're going to want to do is if you push the tray in a touch, but not too far because obviously it'll lock in just, just enough to, to about here. You'll see this little pin. Uh, and we want to take this out. This uh, is a piece that stops the tray going too far and coming out the front. So all you have to do is prise this little piece back here and lift it upwards. So I find if you get a small screwdriver in here and just pull that back with your finger, it'll come out like so. And there's just the plastic pin. Put that somewhere safe. And then pull the tray forward again. And then next what you're going to want to do is, you'll notice it's still not coming out. 
If you look here and here, you can see these two little pieces of plastic that are moving when you pull on it. Those are preventing the tray coming out. So what we want to do is just pull the tray just slightly forward, not too hard, just a bit of pressure on it. And first take one side out and you'll notice that it's moved there. Just keep hold of it there, keep pulling slightly. Release the other pin, like so. And now you'll be able to pull the tray out and that's that section out of the way. So pull that over there. Now, there's two ways you can do this next part, depending on whether you've got small fingers or not. Uh, this is the belt here that causes the problems. And there's this piece of plastic that covers it, prevents you from gearing it off. Now, there's a little clip here that you just have to pick up, like that, you see, and slide this along. Now, if you can get your finger in and do that clip, then fine. You don't have to undo this top piece. But if you can't get that easily, just take these two screws out. So using that small screwdriver, we'll take them off. And I'll leave those in there like that. Just pop that out the way. That's just the magnet that holds the CD down in place. And now you can get at it. So you can see there's this clip here. You're just lifting that up so that piece of plastic's loose. And then you just want to push it. You can get your finger in the front here. Just push this along. And then it'll get to the point where you'll be able to wiggle it loose. So there you go. That's done. That sort of hooks underneath the front of this here in these two holes. We'll put that out the way. And now you can get the belt off. You can do this with your fingers if you want to just get in there and pick it off like so. Or you could also put a screwdriver in, if you wanted, like this, to take it off. Whichever way, it doesn't matter. So, I'm going to get a little plastic tub. This is a lid off a carton of some kind. And I'm just going to put them in here. This is what I'm going to put the boiling water into off the kettle. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side now. So, I'll do that, but I won't bore you with the guide. And there's both of the belts off now. I did this one without taking this plastic off. As I say, my fingers will fit in under there quite easily. When you are rooting around in here though, and if you do take the top off, just be careful not to touch the laser lens there because it will, it can damage it and it'll stop it from reading. So now I've got these two belts in this, I'm gonna go and pour some boiling water in it off the boil on the kettle. What I do is I boil the kettle until it reaches boiling point, And as soon as it clicks off, I pour the water into here. So it's at its hottest and just leave them to stand in it for about two or three minutes and that'll just shrink them a little bit. You could also do this with hot water boiled in a pan, whatever else, but uh, I generally like to have them in a small uh, container like this that I pour the water into and then I can pour it out so I don't leave them in for too long. You don't want them to shrink tiny, otherwise there'll be no use. So let's go and do that now. Okay, so I've got the belts and put them in the boiling hot water. They're just sitting here now. They've been in here for about a minute so far. Maybe a minute and a half. I'm not going to leave them in here for too long, as I said. Two or three minutes will do. It also appears that there's a tiny hole in this uh, cup. And I'm leaking water. <laughs> but yeah. I'll come back in a moment when these have had some time to sit. So it's been about two or three minutes. Uh, and I'm also having water go absolutely everywhere. So it's probably about time that I took these things out. I'm just going to fish them out of the water and be careful they probably will still be a bit hot I'm just going to leave them out on the side like this to cool off a little bit and dry so I'm going to give them about five minutes there okay so the belts have had a while to uh, dry off now and I've mopped up all this mess that I made so uh, these are now all clean sterile and slightly smaller than they were before so we can put these back in now and give the machine another shot. So basically what I'm going to do is just get the belt uh, and obviously hook it around. I'm going to do this first uh, around this disc. And just make sure that it sits in the little groove like so. And then I'm just going to pull it over 
and push it around the uh, other disc of that. Spin it a little bit just to make sure that it is on on turning. And then just set this cog here uh, so it's like pretty much straight off. You want the teeth to start around here because this is what moves the tray in and out. So you want that sat about there. Next, I'm going to do the other one as well. This is the one that I uh, took all the top off. So I'm just going to do this. If you're struggling to get the belt on with your fingers as well, uh, what you could also do is put one side on, like so. And then just get your screwdriver and put the belt around like this. There you go. And then if you just turn it again, make sure it's all nice and free and it's moving and turning everything as it should. Line the mechanism up again. So it, the teeth are over here. And now with the belt on, we can put the rest of this thing back together. So first of all, get that little piece of plastic that you took off last with little teeth on it. Pay attention to these little uh, indents here and put them in. You can see it's got this groove here it sits in. Just pop them over. You can also give it a bit of a slide and it'll sort of track along it. You'll know when it's on because it sort of grabs on. Push it across until it gets to that hole and then just clip it in like that. If you took the top piece off, screw that back on now. If you just sit that in, you'll notice these, these little pegs here that locate it, and then you can just screw it down. Next piece is to get the tray itself and insert it from the front here. Make sure that you go under these little lips either side. Just push it in. And you'll see these click. Keep going. And obviously it should sit under the back ones and the front ones here. And uh, at this point, what you can do is put the other pin in. Like so. And if you push it in all the way, it'll close up. I'm going to do the other side now. Okay, so now it's back together. Something that's worthy of mention that you may have a problem with. If you reassemble your if you reassemble your unit and it's not opening or closing itself properly, or uh, you're getting an error, whatever, the issue that is is literally it's just the cog being slightly out here. So if you're getting that as a problem, or it's opening and closing slow, or the mechanism isn't coming up. I recommend trying it once you've put the belts back on. Try it before you put the lid on so you can check everything works. But if you're having any of them weird issues, all you have to do is literally just take the tray out again and turn it off. Take this pin back out. Do the two clips. And just move this cog slightly here manually. This is the one here that will be causing the problem if it's slow or it's giving you errors or it won't close and open properly. This cog's just not quite in the right place because it's got movement obviously as you push the tray in and out. So just set it, just move it slightly, move it slightly inwards or slightly out. I normally go for these teeth being about where this switch is here. And then put the tray back in again. And you don't actually have to put this pin in to try it. So we can try this now if we just put the tray in and turn it on. Let's just check it opens and closes properly. That seems good to me. And then you can put the pin in once you're, you're happy with it. But yeah, if you're getting um, any strange issue, sometimes it happens. Just set the tray back out and just slightly adjust that cog. And uh, it'll be back on track again. So now we've got a unit. Get both of the trays open and close on without any CDs in. And even if we put CDs in, 
still work. This one isn't reading discs. I'm going to do another video on that, on how to uh, sort them if your laser won't read discs on your machine, or if it takes a long time to read. So check out my channel for that other video where I'll put it in the description. But yeah, there we go. That's how you fix the sticking trays on a CD player. Should work for CDG, DVD, anything with a mechanical draw basically. Uh, it even works for computer drives, so CD-ROM drives, stuff like that that you have in your computer, DVD players. So if you like this video, leave a like down below. Any questions, put them down in the comments section down below. And uh, get subscribed to my channel for future random technology videos like this one. Thanks for watching.